So we've now spent three sections factoring. We've done 6.3 and 6.4, which had factoring by grouping, factoring out a GCF, all that good stuff. Then we had um, factoring trinomials in 6.3, 6.4, part two. Then we had factoring binomials, right? Whether it was difference of squares or difference of cubes, sum of cubes, and then we kind of put it all together. So we practiced all of that so that we could use it for solving polynomials. Well, that's one of the reasons we practiced it. So the first thing to remember is the zero product property. If you have two quantities, A and B, and you multiply and make zero out of them, then one of them has to be zero. Either A is zero or B is zero. Now we use this property to help us solve equations. So we're going to set our equations equal to zero, then we factor them, that's step two, and then we separate the factors, set each one equal to zero, and solve. Okay, so for this problem, first thing we need to do is get the 7x on the negative 10 to the other side. Somehow, some way. Oops, there it is. All right, so 7x, take away 7x, right? But you have to do it to both sides. And then negative 10 plus 10, but you have to do that to both sides. So over on the left-hand side, we're going to have x squared minus 7x plus 10. And then over on the right-hand side, you're going to have 0. Now, this is a trinomial here, but... Luckily for us, the leading coefficient is 1 because it's plain x squared. So if you recall, the 1s are the easier ones to do. So you just need to figure out what times, um, what two numbers would multiply to 10, positive 10, but add up to negative 7. And that's 5 and 2. Okay? So now we have it factored. There's step 2. So here's step 1 right here. All this, all this beginning part right here. Hmm. Hold on, I'm looking for it. There it is. So that's step one. And then this whole bit right here, so that was just to set it equal to zero. And then here's step two where we factored it right here. So we said, okay, that's step two, you factored it. And then step three, you're gonna set each of those factors equal to zero and solve. So let me just start those off right here. This is step two. This is step three. So we're going to say, look, if these two things multiply to make zero, one of them has to be zero. So either x minus two equals zero or x minus five equals zero. So this would be called, x would be equal to two because you'd add two to both sides. Or x is equal to five, right? And I think we're done. I think we got everything. Better box that up. And we've got both our answers. All right, now we're just going to do it over and over and over and over and over because that's the way algebra is, right? All right, hold on one sec. There we go, I typed it up. Okay, so. For this one, we're going to have to do some work for step one because we're nowhere close to being ready to, to do this. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to put this right in here. All right, I'm going to have to start by distributing. So x times 3x is 3x squared plus 2x equals 8. Now you need to have it all on one side. So that's 3x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0 because you'll have to subtract 8 from both sides there. All right, so now we've got our equation set equal to zero. Unfortunately for you, this is going to be a little bit trickier because this is not a leading coefficient of one. So let's stop right there for a second, and then we're going to have to go factor this. So let's put this in here. So we need three times negative eight makes negative 24. So I need to multiply to negative 24, but I'm going to have to add up to the middle term, which was positive two positive 2. Okay, so we got to figure out what makes negative 24. All right, so let's think. Um, negative 1 and positive 24, that would make 23. Negative 2 and positive 12, that would make ne um, positive 10. Negative 3 and positive 8, that would make 5. We're getting there, closer. Negative 4 and 6, there it is, that would make 2. Okay, so now we're going to have to factor the 3x squared plus 2x minus 8 using that. So it's going to be 3x squared and then minus 4x plus 6x minus 8. 
equals zero, and we'll factor by grouping. That's x comes out of both of those, x, and that leaves you 3x minus 4, plus 2, 3x minus 4, equals zero. So that leaves us 3x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. All right, so there's that ugly factoring that we have to do when we have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is not 1. You're stuck doing this kind of brutal method, unless you can just figure it out. So some students, they factored so much in their life that they kind of just see the numbers and see what it should be. That's fine if, if that's your technique. But if you... If that's, you're not comfortable with that, then you have to do this other thing where you break up that middle term using the numbers that we found in this table right here. I don't know how I'm going to get all this to fit on one screen, but we'll figure that out later. Okay, so then, now that I have that, then I'm going to have to set each one equal to zero, right? So, step two, right? Oh, this was step two. I'm sorry. Step two was the factoring part. So step one is just setting it equal to zero. Step two is the factoring part, all this work that we're doing here. And then step three, we set each factor equal to zero. So I say, okay, it's either 3x minus 4 equals zero, or x plus 2 equals zero, which would mean, all right, and this one you'll have to take a little bit of work for. You're going to have to add 4. So 3x equals 4, so x is equal to... 4 thirds or x is equal to negative 2. Now the 4 thirds, what I'm, how I'm doing that is I'm adding 4 and dividing by 3, right? So you add 4 to both sides and then divide by 3 and you'll get 4 thirds for that one. Okay, so there's our answers. done. There we go. I managed to finagle that kind of up here in the corner a little bit, so just to get it out of our way a slight bit. Okay, so now that leaves us with the next problem. And the next problem is a little bit obvious because it's got four terms. So that's going to be obviously factored by grouping. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is get all of it onto one side. So that's what we'll do first. So we're going to get, this would be 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. Right? We're subtracting 8x and subtracting 20 from both sides. All right, there's step one done. Now we're going to factor by grouping. So x squared comes out, that leaves you 2x plus 5 minus Let's see, 4 goes into 8 and 4 goes into 20. So let's try that. That leaves you 2x plus 5. Oh, how convenient. Equals 0. So this is 2x plus 5 times x squared minus 4. Now you're not done because x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. That's a perfect square, that's a perfect square, and there's a subtraction. So this is the easiest factoring you can get. This is 2x plus 5, x minus 2, x plus 2, right? You take the square root of 4. All right, so now you have three factors. But that's okay. You're just going to set each one of them equal to 0. So you'd say, okay, if, if I've got all three factors, each one of them could be 0. So it could be 2x plus 5 equals 0. Well, let me type this. There we go. we got all three of them. So either x plus 2 is 0, x minus 2 is 0, or 2x plus 5 is 0. So you got three options. Okay, so each one of those gives its own answer. So the hardest one to see is the 2x plus 5. That would come from the... Hold on. There we go, I guess work. Okay, so this will be x equals. You would subtract 5, that will give you negative 5, divided by 2. So negative 5 over 2. Oops, 2. And just for the sake of, of our notes, I'm going to write negative 5 on top, just because otherwise it looks like that little negative is part of the division bar, and that gets a little confusing. Or x equals 2, or x equals negative 2, right? And there we go. We've got all of our answers.
done. All right, time for the last one, and it's a fraction one. We always love those. All right, so our first mission in life is going to be to get rid of, well, we can bring the three over. I mean, we might as well do that now. So that would be the same thing, the same thing but with two on that side, right? So it will be plus two because if you subtract three from both sides, zero. But we don't really like the fractions. I mean, that's just awful to deal with. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by the least common denominator, which would be six. Right, so you're going to times everything by six. Oops. There we go. Six over one, if you want. Six over one, right? Because I just I write it that way just to remind you that six is in the numerator here. Okay, if you do that, what's going to happen? You're going to distribute 6 over 1 to all three of these. Okay, so 6 over 1 times 1, 6. Well, that's easy. They're reciprocals of each other, so it's just going to be plain x squared. Plus, now here's the hard one. 3 goes into 6 twice, and 2 times 4 makes 8. Or if you want to think of it this way, 6 times 4 is 24, right? 6 times 4. So you could say, hey, it's 24 over 3 but 24 over 3 is 8, right? Plus 12 equals 0. So I guess we could just make a little note over here somewhere. There we go. 4 thirds times 6 makes 24 over 3. That makes 8. And again, you guys have calculators. Your calculators will find these numbers for you as well. All right, so we've got x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. We're good with that. So now we need to factor that. Now luckily for us, that one is one where the leading coefficient is 1. Right? See in front of the x squared, see how it's plain x squared? Well, plain x squared is a lot easier. right? You just need to figure out what numbers multiply to 12 that add up to 8. All right, so what numbers multiply to 12? 1 and 12. Well, that's not good. That's 13. Um, 2 and 6. Oh, there it is, 2 and 6. So 2 and 6. There we go, we've got it factored. So then x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 6 is equal to 0. This is kind of ironic. It's the fractional one, but it was probably the easiest one on the page. <laughs> All right, so then x equals negative 2, or x equals negative 6. There's our answers. All right, with that, we are done for this page. There we go. I had to finagle that table in a little bit, but there it is. I managed it. All right, so we have learned that we need to set the equation equal to 0. Then we need to factor, and sometimes that factoring is not easy, like when it's a trinomial with a leading coefficient that's not 1. Ugh. And then once we factor it, then we set each factor equal to 0, and we solve each one. All right, I hope that helps there, and I'll see you back here for the next page.